Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. In the last video, we looked at all the new shortcuts that were added to Ableton Live 12, except for the ones for clips. And this is exactly what we're going to look at today. And I've also added all these shortcuts to the PDF with all the new shortcuts for Live 12 that you can download for free. Link in the description and up above as well. So let's get to it. Okay, so the next section is all about shortcuts for clips that goes for both audio and MIDI clips. So the first one is Alt plus Tab if you're in a clip to switch between the clip editor view modes. So these are these. So then you can use Alt and Tab to cycle through. You technically you can also use Alt plus Shift and Tab to go to the previous one. But since it's just two in audio clips and if I go to a MIDI clip it's just three. I think just remembering the one shortcut might be easier because you can just simply cycle through. So it's Alt Tab here as well or Alt Shift and Tab to cycle backwards. With Live 12, the way the quantization works has been changed. And basically the quantization, it has its own tab in audio clips and is part of the MIDI tools in MIDI clips. And the same shortcut still applies. So it's still Control, or Command, Shift and U. But as you can see here, this window opens or this panel. And the same goes for audio clips. Going back here, you can see it actually is open for every single clip that we select. So all the next shortcuts apply to MIDI clips only. And the next four use the same principle. So they use Control and Windows or Command and Mac and then one of the function keys to basically set some of the clip properties. So I need to set the insert marker somewhere. So this here, I've set it to bar two, could also set it to bar four, wherever I want to make the change. And so if I do command, control and F9, then this sets the clip start marker to the selected time. If I use control or command and F10 with the insert marker in a position, then this sets the clip loop start marker. Then if I use control or command plus F11, it sets the clip loop end marker. So you see a pattern there as well of what these do. And then last but not least, with control or command plus F12, we can set the clip end marker. And as I've mentioned before, this of course only works on Mac if you've changed the option to use the function keys, not for the Mac specific functions. If you're on Mac, by default, the different function keys, so F1, F2 and so on, they actually have special controls like um, play, adjusting the volume and things like that. So if you want to use this shortcut that I just showed you, you're going to have to go to your system settings or system preferences. The naming is different depending on what operating system you're on. And then you're going to have to go down to keyboard then click on keyboard shortcuts and then down here you find the function keys like the way it looks can be different as well depending on mac os and so you're gonna have to make sure that this is turned on so basically you, you want to set it then to use a standard function key so if you want to still use these other controls like pause and turning the volume up and down you're going to have to use the function key plus those keys to still make it work so you're going to have to decide what you find more important okay so in the midi note editor also if the insert marker is set then you can use alt plus up and down arrow keys to select the next or previous nodes. So Alt and Up selects the next node. And Alt and the down arrow key, the previous ones. So you can basically just jump through all the different MIDI nodes in a clip. The same principle can also be applied to adjust node velocity. But in this case, you're gonna have to have the MIDI note selected. So right now I've got a MIDI note selected and if you use Alt on Windows or Command and Mac and the up or down arrow keys, you can adjust the note velocity up or down.
then you can also adjust the note velocity deviations, like the range in which the MIDI note velocity can happen. You can use Alt and Shift on Windows or Command and Shift on Mac to adjust this deviation. And you can see this both happening here with the deviation setting and then also here that there's been a range created. There's also a shortcut for adjusting the note chance. So on Windows, it's Control plus Alt and the up and down arrow keys. On Mac, it's Command, Alt and Shift, which is quite a lot of keys as well. And then up and down arrow keys. So this way you can adjust the note chance then. Next up, we can use E to split MIDI notes. So just like you could split MIDI clips, or clips in general. You can basically apply the same now with the relatively the same command as well within MIDI clips in notes. So let me just maybe grab that. You can also hold E and then use the mouse to basically see where you would like to create the split. If you want to have it be split along the grid, then you can use command on Mac or control on Windows and then E. And you see the MIDI note is automatically split in as many units as the grid is set to. So if I just select this and do Command E again, you see this happens again. You can also use the insert marker first to select where the MIDI note should be split without having the note selected. So if you have several notes, say in a chord, this would be the best option to split them. So you can use Command or Control E to split it at this position. Okay, let's select a new one. And you can also chop with the mouse. On Windows, the command for this is Control and E. And on Mac, it's Alt and E. And so I can just hold this. And then you can see that the mouse cursor changes. And then I can increase the amount of chops the more I drag up. And if you wanted the chopping to be in equal parts, so it's increased by a factor of two, always as you drag the mouse up, you can add shift to this. So on Windows, that would be Control, Shift and E, and on Mac, Alt, Shift and E, and then drag in upwards. And you can see I've chopped very, very, very small parts this way. You can also select multiple notes with this. You can also chop with the keyboard. So I can use Control E on Windows or Command E on Mac to chop notes. And you can use the up and down arrow keys that way to uh, chop not according to the grid settings this way. Basically, this is a function that we know from MIDI clips and the same has been done with Control or Command J. So this is the command to consolidate clips in the arrangement view. And now we can use this in MIDI clips to join selected notes. So right now I've got a lot of individual MIDI notes that I just chopped up. If I wanted to join them back together, I can use Control on Windows or Command on Mac plus J and they're combined. And so for example, if you select the something, you can also use Command or Control and Alt and J. And then if I select a certain amount of time, or in this case, like the MIDI notes, and I do Control on Windows, Command on Mac, plus Alt and J, then those would be spanned the whole selection, even though they weren't that long before. By the way, if you have the computer MIDI keyboard on, then everything, basically you can't use just E itself. For example, for splitting clips, you would have to use shift and everything, all the commands that I showed you that have added shift in it wouldn't work this way anymore because then the shift would be seen as just using those commands. So the next two shortcuts are about group node probabilities. So you can have probabilities for groups. And so I could select this chord or these three MIDI notes 
and do control on Windows or command on Mac plus G. And now I've grouped them together. So by default, the setting is to play all. We can do a right click and also select group notes to just play one out of this group. And then we can also select another three MIDI notes. And if I do Command G again, then you can see down below in the line at the bottom that it's play one that I set now. So if I'm playing this, you can hear that only one of that is played. If I want to ungroup them, make sure they're selected and then you do control on Mac and then you do control on Windows or command on Mac plus shift and G. So it works the same way as grouping tracks or building racks. Then we got two new one key shortcuts. So they will only work when the computer MIDI keyboard is off or otherwise with shift. And that is fold to notes. So F because it was on turns folding off now and if I click it again it folds to the notes within the key and then we also have fold to scale which is G as a toggle as well okay and then another thing if the MIDI editor preview so this icon here is turned on then if you select one or more nodes using the computer keyboard navigation controls. So you can use control plus left and right or up and down arrow keys on Windows and alt plus those arrow keys on Mac and then the notes will be played. And then there's also a way you can invert the selection. So for example, if I have these three notes or this chord selected and I would like the other ones to be selected, but this one not, then you can just use command or control plus shift and A, which is actually quite easy to remember because selecting everything is command or control A. So deselecting should work now with the shift as well. So that's all the new shortcuts. Don't forget to download the free PDF, which will make it much easier to learn all of the shortcuts and integrate them into your workflow. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you next time. Until then, bye.